So friends, we have gathered here for Professor Godavari Mishra's lecture and the title is before you, Speaking of the Unspeakable, a Discourse on Advaita Methodology. Uh, this is under the Infosys Foundation supported academic development program and let me introduce uh, Professor Mishra to you and many of you already, already know him. He is uh, a specialist in non-Western philosophical schools and he was awarded Charles Wallace uh, Visiting Fellowship at Oxford University. Uh, he was also invited to Germany by the Adyar uh, Theosophical Society. Then he was a visiting professor uh, at the Mahatma Gandhi Institute uh, in Mauritius and also a visiting professor uh, uh, again second time in the same institution. He has completed three research projects. He has 41 research articles to his, uh, to his credit and he has authored five books. Uh, amongst his uh, students, there are uh, 14 students of doctoral degree and uh, uh, 11 students of uh, the, M the MPhil degree. And last but not the least, he was the professor of philosophy at the University of Madras, Chennai. And at present, he is the visiting scholar under the Infosys Foundation supported academic development program. I request Shri Bhupal Patwardhan, the chairman of our executive board, to felicitate uh, Professor Mishra with a bouquet. And now I request uh, Professor Mishra to begin his lecture. Shankaram, Shankaracharyam, Kesavam, Vadarayanam, Sutra Vasya Krutu Vande, Bhagavanto Punah Punaha. Respected friends, today I am going to speak on the concept of unspeakability of Brahman and how Abhyatins, especially Shankaracharya, goes to speak of the unspeakable. This problem has been there in many of the philosophical schools in India. And as I have already indicated, there are many philosophical tenets which Buddha has borrowed from, influenced by the Upanishads and he, as I told you, has also criticized the Upanishads in many ways as you know about Nairatmibada and the like. And the same thing has happened to Shankara and Shankara criticizes Buddha but I always felt the inner flow of essence, inessenseless and true essence has been continuing in this land in all the philosophical schools till date. Friends, people think and this has been accepted that Ramanuja criticized Shankara, but I would like to submit as 
Buddha has been taken forward by Shankara in his criticism and furthering the philosophy, as has been done by the Buddha to the Upanishadic philosophy. Same thing has been happening to Ramanuja. Ramanuja is not just criticizing, doing away with Shankara, but taking forward Shankara in many ways. The inner essence has to be seen, which is not usually done by the philosophers as we have contemp contemporarized, sorry, we have compartmentalized ourselves and our thinking. What Shankara wants to say is the whole Shastra, that which has been spoken, that which has been vocalized through the words, what does it do? It takes away the Bheda. I read a line from Shankara's Brahma Sutra, he says, Abhidya Kalpita Bheda Nibhruttitvat Shastrasya. What does Shastra do? It takes away Nibhruttitvat, it takes away, it does away with the Bheda. How does Veda come from? Where does it come from? Abhidya Kalpita, it has been imagined by Abhidya, it has been superimposed by Abhidya and that is why the Shastra does not give you anything new. It only takes away what has been superimposed by ignorance. And I just wanted to show something. Wittgen tenses, whereof one cannot speak, thereof one must be silent. That is not what Shankara wants to do. Shankara says that whereof we cannot speak, we should try to speak out in some way, so that even though the object remains unspeakable, the vastu still there would be some way that we can understand the vastu. The whole topic that I am going to discuss before you today is about this that how to handle the unspeakable and the unspeakable reality that is Brahman, Atman, the self-consciousness in Advaita Vedanta and how Shankara presents it. As you know, friends, one of the great philosophers of this country who has made it possible for us to understand what India is, is Shankara, who not only gave us a philosophy, but gave us the idea of being an Indian and gave us the idea of how the whole concept of India gets vibrated in your small puja room by having five types of stones collected from five different rivers from the five corners of the land. I just want to tell you that the charismatic Acharya has had this vision to see unity in diversity, which has not been happening, which has not happened earlier and later. And what type of a unity? A unity which is not other than one's own self. The self extension is everything and in the self, in the realization of self, there is the possibility of realization of everything and that is the essence and that is what I am going to speak. And as you know, I have already spoken earlier in my lectures what is the Aparushayatva of the Vedas, how the Vedas have been spoken of as not man-made. And I have told that they are revealed literature and not born out of human intellect. Human intellect always is associated with omission, deletion and addition. Suppose I want to tell you something, you do something as you like, you omit certain things which you do not like, which has happened in the Smriti literature, I have already spoken. And so, Shruti is not like that, it is a real literature and Rishis have envisioned this and therefore, it is Apaurishaya Yatha Purva, I mean, this has been going along with the creation and therefore there is no beginning and the end of the Shruti and this has been coming down to us through a parampara, not of writing but by hearing 
and that is called as karna parampara vidyate jnayate anena iti vedaha agnyata jnapako vedaha and there I, I, I have already told again I am repeating that there are two divisions of the veda from another angle that is veda purva and veda anta and veda purva is purva mimamsa and veda anta is uttar mimamsa there have been a debate on the primacy of the either which one is important Veda Purva is important or Veda Anta is important. There have been a lot of debate about this. The Mimamsaka in and through their literature have tried to prove that whole Vedanta is nothing but are a set of, a, a group of Arthavada Vakyas. They either praise or condemn certain things. They have no Pramanya by themselves. They say, Amnayasya Kriyarthatvat Anarthakyam Atadarthanam Kriya, in the Kriya, in the action lies the importance of the whole Vedas. If, they, if, a, if a sentence is meaningful, it can only be meaningful if it is associated with an action. Like how the children learn language is by seeing, observing the language operation through the action. Bring a cow bring a horse or give food to the horse, they will understand what is a horse different from the cow. That is how they understand. So, the any language understanding can take place only by action and what to talk of the Vedas. All the more, Amnaya means only the action. It has its import in the action. Therefore, Anarthakyam Atadarthanam, if something is not, not, not action oriented, they are not meaningful. So, that is what they say and there are two types of statements in the Vedas. One is Kriyartha Bodhaka Vakya, all these things, Jyotish Thomena Swarga Kamo Yajaita and the like. So many, there are so many varieties of statements and there are certain statements like Siddhartha Bodhaka Vakya. Siddhartha Bodhaka Vakyas are those Vakyas, those statements which talk about the established entity, the entity which is existing. Mimamsaka say, if I say that there is a place called Paris, it is not meaningful because it is not associated with action. If I say bring salt or drink water, it is meaningful. Because the first one is only talking about a thing which is there existing. Just an existing thing uh, without being associated with any action cannot be meaningful at all. Like there is something, there is something, but how, how do you understand that? Understanding does not take place, understanding takes place only when it has any action. So, the dialogue goes on and the tradition of Vedantins say, the tra tradition of Vedanta says that even Siddhartha Bodhaka Vakyas are meaningful. The, I don't want to take much of my time to your time on this. They say, suppose the two examples are given. Suppose somebody says, a son is born to you. It is a statement without associating, without being associated with any action. A son is born to you, putra stage ataha. Now, it does not say any action. It is meaningful or not meaningful, number one. Number two, Kanyate Garbhini, your onward daughter is pregnant. Suppose such a statement is made. Is it meaningful or not meaningful? The Vedantins say that even though they are existing, the statements are on something which, are, which is existing, still it implies some action. Therefore, they are meaningful. The meaningful does not mean that it should be action oriented, it should have some implication in action. Therefore, you, we cannot say that Miman, the Vedantic statements are all meaningless. That is what the Vedantins say that because when I say Putrasta Jataha, a son is born to you, you should go and prepare yourself from, for Jata Karma or some celebration, something, or you have to do something in the other case also. You cannot say that they are meaningless statements because some way or other than action can be implied in those statements also in the future. 
ओके सो शंकर सेज अतः भूत वस्तुपर वेदभाग नास्ति वचन साहस मत नो हिसेज दट भूत वस्तु इन एस्टाब्लिश एंटिटी द वेद भाग हुई टॉक्स अबउट दिस ही डॉज वेन ही वाज क्रिटिसाइजिंग चारबाक दट वेन चारबाक से दट आत्मा इज नेति नेति आत्मा यू कैन नॉट से लाइक दैट ही सेज हु एवर इज रिफ्यूटिंग इट डूइंग अवे विथ इट तस्े आत्मक बात ही हिमसेल्फ एड्रेसेस इट फ्रॉम हिज लाइक फ्रॉम हिज स्टैंड पॉइंट तस्े ही हिमसेल्फ स्टैंड एज द सेल्फ अदरवाइज इवन रिफ्यूटेशन कैन नॉट बी डन देर फोर शंकर सेज अतो भूत वस्तु पर वेद भाग नास्ती वचन साहस मत इट इज इट इज अन्न फ्यूटाइल टू टॉक दैट द द द द द सेक्शन ऑफ द वेद विच टॉक अबाउट द द एक्जिस्टिंग एंटिटी इज मीनिंग लेस नौ द वेद पूर्व वट इज आई आई वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग यू टू नेक्स्ट फ्यू मिनिट्स वट एवर आई हेव टाइम we are running out of time so half an hour i will try to tell you three things one is what this mimamsa can talk about where is the limitation in mimamsa and how vedantin addresses it what is the methodology vedantin has extended for the understanding of something which cannot be spoken that is all i am going to talk and this is uh, coming back to the Mimamsa Veda Purva is the first person that talks about three human goals. You know, this is what philosophers have been doing all or all through broad generalization. Like the man is a rational animal, a definition. It is broadly generalizes a particular aspect or particular point. So the Veda Purva, the first person of the Veda, talks about. Three sadhyas, three human goals. What are the three human goals? Self improvement. That is upadhi pariskar. That is improvement of our body, improvement of our mind, and the like. And second is vishaya, improvement of the possessions, riches, progeny, and the like. That is second. And third is very important. Set up improvement. security and happiness depends on these first two factors if you have everything and you are not healthy you cannot enjoy you are healthy but you have no nothing you cannot enjoy you are healthy and you are in also have things but your setup say you don't have security you cannot enjoy so the three things this is a mimamsakas we are putting it he says that is security and happiness depend upon these factors if any one of the factors is definite deficient there is no happiness enjoyment depends upon one's self possessions and ambience and for these three we need three sadhanas i have talked about three sadhyas i am not going to talk about three sadhanas that is physical discipline kai ka sadhana like somewhere you have to keep yourself fit verbal discipline you have to acquire right type of knowledge vachika sadhana you should know how to present things properly and manasa sadhana that is mental discipline like meditation first i talked about sadhyatraya what are the goals human goals sadhyatraya will come when you have sadhana instruments for getting that and these are the sadhanas kaika sadhana vachika sadhana and manasa sadhana and these two aspects namely sadhya traya and sadhana traya are associated with three defects this is this all comes in the brahma sutra bhashya of shankara he says there are intrinsic defects in things which are spoken of as goals as as far as human beings are concerned sadhya traya and sadhana traya have intrinsic defects some people go get happiness with sadhya traya some people go with sadhana traya but both of these sadhya and sadhana are having intrinsic defects namely number 1 dukha misritatvam things are mixed with pain sadhana na 
it is very easy to say that go and do yoga many people start yoga but they only remember do yoga in the dream it is not possible no no every day going and one hour very difficult so the things are mixed with pain like prapane dukham rakshane dosham dukham nashte dukham so you know getting something getting a house so difficult you know take back loan this that that hundred things and rakshane dosham today plumber is not available tomorrow the something is not available like it is a headache to to maintain a house and suppose the house is gone dukkha so so that is what so it is in like this sadhya traya and sadhana traya are associated with dosha traya number 1 dosha dukkha misri tatvam they are associated with pain second no total satisfaction like gambling i am just putting these words strongly for our understanding atrupti karatvam if you have one house another house one car another car like never give complete satisfaction all the sadhya trayas go on non ending without giving the final total satisfaction atrupti karatvam third they are they never lead to freedom they are associated with the bandhas bandhakatva they are dependent causing and dependence causing instead of strengthening person they weaken the person so any any anything that you get is associated with dosha traya now now comes vedanta i have already talked about sadhya traya sadhana traya and dosha traya which are associated with three defects i have already enumerated spoken now the vedanta comes with a prescription that there is something called dosha rahita sadhya a goal which has not been cannot be associated with any dosha defect at all generally majority of the people are satisfied with sadhyas and sadhanas even though they are affected afflicted by the doshas even though they are hurt dodged by them they are happy with this like staying in a bad marriage so, like not only that like even though they are hurt dodged by them they are happy with this wildly and even scriptural like jyotishram all these things what all the vedas purva like veda purva talks about they 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 remain happy with that there are a few who are happy with only defect free sadhya that is dosha rahita sadhya a sadhya which cannot be associated with any dosha at all they are the adventurous few very few that our the, the vedanta acharya shankara through prasthanatai has addressed all the vedantins have addressed in their own way and this is what vedanta does now how and what how, what and how does it addresses to it addresses to those people now this for them vedanta says i have a prescription for nirdosha sadhya and that is not elsewhere not by going anywhere acquiring anything it is not going anywhere not acquiring anything it is your own self that is brahman that is a self knowledge can bring you the nirdosha sadhya the vedanta says that you do not have to run after that brahman it is only you it is a reveling statement this brings about another problem so for the pro- person thinks that he is happy stroke anarchy with all the defects given the courses pancha courses the body pain whatever the defect in me and defect in other you know we have the tendency to find like i have i don't have this and you also don't have that so so there is a, here there is a dichotomy whether i am the sadosa jeeva or nirdosa brahman the problem comes this is a, this is a prelude to what i want to say unspeakability i am just speaking about the what all the speakability means so here there is a dichotomy am i the sadosa jeeva or nirdosa brahman and what is the nirdosa for them 
ద వేద పూర్వ ఐ హ్యావ్ టోల్డ్ యూ సత్యత్రయ సాధనత్రయ అండ్ దోషత్రయ వేద పూర్వ బికమ్స్ నాన్ అపీలింగ్ ఫర్ దోస్ మెచ్యూర్డ్ పీపుల్ దిస్ నిర్దోష సాధ్య బ్రహ్మన్ ఇస్ బింగ్ స్పోకన్ అబౌట్ ఫర్ దట్ స్పీకర్ వేదాంత గివ్స్ ద క్లూ టు గెట్ దట్ డిఫెక్ట్ ఫ్రీ బ్రహ్మన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్స్ ఓన్ సెల్ఫ్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ బై ద బై నాట్ బై డూయింగ్ ఎనీథింగ్ నాట్ బై డూయింగ్ ఎనీథింగ్ దట్ యూ కెన్ గెట్ దిస్ బై బై నోయింగ్ దిస్ యూ కెన్ గెట్ దిస్ దిస్ నిర్దోష సాధ్య దిస్ కమ్స్ టు ఎ రివిలింగ్ షక్ అండ్ షెకింగ్ స్టేట్మెంట్ ఇన్ వేదాంత దట్ బై దిస్ వన్ కెన్ గెట్ ద ఫుల్ఫిల్మెంట్ ఎ ఫుల్ఫిల్డ్ లైఫ్ బియాండ్ ద లైఫ్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ వెరైటీస్ ఆఫ్ డిఫెక్ట్స్ బై లిసనింగ్ దిస్ he gets into a problem because it is not that easy to get out of what i have been into something which is just being spoken by a shastra or something like i am a person till this he has been taking himself as sadosa jiva that has derived his being from all the courses the all the courses defect are reminded by me and others especially those who have not married and getting married will know what all the deficiencies they have will be spoken by the wife or the husband you don't have this you don't know this you don't hundred list is every day will be added so those you know that is what i know myself what the those i have and you remind myself what i those i have and i also do the same thing to you so in the in the in the world and vedanta says i am nirdosha paramatma and not sadosha jeeva science gives the knowledge which is sadosha this is where i make a shift the whole science you know there is where i always say science in vedantic term terminology is a proven falsity falsehood all scientific knowledge and philosophy in other words unproved truth on proven truth so i don't want to take much of your time in this but vedanta says i am nirdosha brahman and i feel that i am sadosha jiva and of my anubhava here is a here is a dichotomy and therefore a search starts a jigyasa starts a jigyasa starts only for the person who has that desire a hermeneutic need for getting out of this sadosa jeeva hood to the nirdosa brahman hood so vedanta says i am defect free and anubhava experience in the world makes me understand that i am defectful so there is a dichotomy and therefore the the pramana now for this change just to just for this philosophical shift the person needs a means like eyes for color one pramana is required and there are six pramanas spoken in the vedanta in our tradition by and large and five of them torn outwards and mean to study the external world objects bahir mukha pramana and intrinsic limitation of the pramanas are there for every pramana there is a limitation and what is the limitation the eyes also cannot see my face i cannot see the non existence of things by eyes so anupalabdhi has been non like a non perception has been accepted I, i don't want to deal with that and what is the pramana is to realize so how how do we develop a pramana to realize the self and hence there is only one pramana for such a realization such a, such a shift and vedanta pramana like the mirror shows my face not my eyes in the same way for self you require a vedanta darpana a mirror of vedanta so how like how do we get it like you 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 like for everything a different type of pramana is required to understand it for microbes you might need a microscope for distant things in a distant place you will need a telescope similarly 
you need to know the self through a pramana sabda pramana which is called vedanta pramana vedanta has to be employed by proper methodology hence shravana manana and nididhyasana has been spoken about it has been spoken told i quote atmavare drashtavya srotavyo mantavyo nididhyasi tavya that is what is the statement drashtavya means perceived perceived means through knowledge not by so the systematic and consistent analysis of the central teachings of the vedanta under guidance of a competent teacher not me huh? competent teacher the they say the upanishad says what a competent teacher is he says guru meva abhikachet srotriyam brahmanishtam samit pani a person who has realized and who knows how to speak that type of a teacher guru is that who has realized not not no philosophy teacher is realized maybe one we do not know i cannot make a bland like a statement like that so suppose he is not realized he cannot show this it is not an engineering teacher or a mathematics teacher no it is vedanta you have to he has to give you atmagyana if he himself has not seen he cannot give you and he has seen even then he has he cannot give you if he does not have the methodology of teaching therefore he should be a srotriya therefore he should know how to teach he should have the knowledge of the texts so 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 so, are, so who is a teacher an earlier competent disciple and like extracting central teaching of the vedantic shastras and six points are required like how do we understand the vedanta tatparya that is upakrama upasamhar whatever is spoken in the beginning the same thing is spoken at the end you know the the story the the father teaches svetaketu that nine times the tattvamasi there is from the beginning he starts with tattvamasi ends with tattvamasi it is it is you and abhyasa repetition navakrutva upadesha and phalam realization of the self as defectless defectless sadhya arthavat upapatti and these are the six things i don't want to get into the the meaning of this verse because of the paucity of time there are the, the, these are the methodology of understanding vedantic statements and that is what this verse says the tatparya understanding is what is the is is, is a guru does to the student to the to the person who has the desire of knowing brahman now intellect is not going to accept and as long as there are doubts there is no knowledge i have already spoken about this in my past class in this last uh, course that i have the how the doubt is different from the knowledge how westerners think about doubt and add things information and how is our knowledge it ends in a culminate culminates in a drishti or vijya so hence manana is required not that we don't have doubt we have also doubt but this type of a doubt gets eradicated by by manana and then nididhyasana vedantic meditation internalization of the knowledge mind should develop an decondition from the world setups we are only changing our activities not questioning our existence and why it is because there is no vichara once we question the satyatraya and sadhanatraya does not make any difference if 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 somebody is there for a person of own understanding for a person in the world there is a burden and if he is not there it is emptiness even wife and husband if he is there she is there burden not there emptiness this is how to samsara is when things are there you always crave for something else when things are not there you always find that the, 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 the emptiness in the absence of that thing vedanta talks of the opposite opposite that is presence is a, a presence is a, what is that presence is a celebration so yeah so in this up, up, uh, like okay so in these upanishads it has been spoken that i am coming to the last part of my talk it cannot be spoken rebuilt by words it is unspoken like a unspeakable and it has it, it cannot it cannot be spoken at all in kena it is said 
न तत्र चक्षुर्गछति न वाग्गछति न मनो मन टू दैट लेवल ऑफ रियलिटी द परसेप्शन कैन नॉट गो न वाग्गछति स्पीच कैन नॉट गो माइंड कैन नॉट गो इफ माइंड गोज ओनली द स्पीच विल फॉलो माइंड ऑल्सो डज नॉट गो स्पीच डज नॉट गो विजन परसेप्शन डज नॉट गो सो what are the conditions that the object should fulfill for being meaningful there are five conditions for words to give knowledge the vedanta brings brings being shabda pramana should have some methodology to understand the object beyond words and there are five as i told you the first one is rudhi rudhi is pratyaksha vishayatva that which is available for direct perception there is a con- contact that there is a proper noun to denote this that words can communicate the object like sun star anything so that is called rudi that which has been taken to be presented by that particular word this is how you understand things how the understanding of the words come in the common parlance ordinary world past is rudi if i tell bring the mic the mic has a name for an object it is being brought so mic rudi so jati a species suppose there is a tree outside which we have not seen but we have seen trees elsewhere i have told you about samanya jatitva gotva so when we hear that there is a tree we connect my earlier seen tree to understand this tree suppose there is a snake and somebody says that what is a, it, there is a snake i have some understanding how because i know sarpatva means what the the the, the snake ness is associated with that whatever is going so the animal then i understand that so in in the case of sun there is only one it can be understood some other way rudi so the apple tree in the heaven can be understood because of the species there is a, you know you know that story i don't have to tell because like the, the, the understanding comes because of the because of the rudi and jati the third is guna when i say blue lotus we understand understanding of the thing in a particular way comes the fourth is karma that is suppose i say please call the gardener from action you can understand the person so five ways rudi jati guna karma and sambandha when i say father brother wife husband these words can be understood because of the relationship okay so these are the five five these are the five this five above five do not work in case of and to understand brahman how do we understand now that is what is the main topic that we wanted to talk today vedanta pramana is the only means of getting knowledge of brahman brahman being beyond words i have told you natatra chakshur gachati न वागछति नो मन हाउ कैन इट रिवील ब्रह्मन हाउ कैन नाउ वेन वेन देयर इज द वेद देमसेल्फ्स टॉक अबाउट दैट दिस व्हाट्स डू नॉट रीच दैट इज इट नॉट इनसेन टू टॉक गिव अ सच अ लार्ज वैरायटी ऑफ उपनिषद्स टू अंडरस्टैंड ब्रह्मन द कॉन डाइकोटॉमी कंट्रोवर्सी सो उपनिषद्स आर वर्ड्स सो हाउ द वर्ड्स विल मेक ब्रह्मन अंडरस्टूड so brahman under, bring brahman understanding logically speaking the words cannot function unless conditions for the understanding are fulfilled that is shabda pravrutti nimitta must be fulfilled so yeah so limitation of pancha pravrutti nimitta five as mentioned son as the name we cannot we can understand if we do not understand an object we can refer to that through adhara adheya sambandha like i can say that something there in the in that on the table table and the object jati can reveal any other number of species pancha shabda prabhruti nimittani brahman does not have any of these things now i come to the topic unspeakability of the brahman it does not have a name because it is pratyaksha is not going to give this at all pratyaksha gochara we have already seen that it cannot be seen pratyaksha prasiddha it cannot be known it does not have a name is the brahman name or not yes and no 
I'll say how it is. The Brahman, the name is not Brahman, the thing. Always a name is not the thing. You know, the, the, the name only points to a thing. Name has a limitation as far as the thing is concerned. Any name is not that particular thing. Sugar, the name is not sugar, the thing. By telling sugar, you will not get your mouth sweet, become sweet. So, no jati, first it does not have a name. Second, no jati because there is no Brahman species. Species possible, ekatve aneka anugatam samanya. One, but existing in many is called as samanya. But Brahman is one. So there is no, there is no jati for this. We cannot talk of a species of sun, akas and the like. And there are, there is one, same with the Brahman. So no guna, because in case of Brahman, it is different. Brahman cannot reveal by property. It is not having property. If there is a nilatva, then the utpala can be pointed or can be understood. But Brahman is without any characteristics. It has no attributes at all. Therefore, nirguna, no karma, because it does not have action. Like cook, driver, it is niskriya. There is a text written by the direct disciple of Shankara to make others understand his involvement with the tradition of Advaita. That is, Suresh Swaracharya, he writes a book called Naiskarmya Siddhi. So, there is no karma at all possible as far as Brahman is concerned. And no sambandha. No relationship, because a relationship requires more than one. So, Brahman is one, Advitiya. Therefore, Vedanta, the words, all the, all the mass of literature, Upanishads, cannot reveal Brahman. Now, we go to find out a methodology to understand Vedanta. Still, words can ingenuously reveal the, by using special method. Upanishads do that. That is why Guru, as I told you earlier, is required since abnormal method is used, the words do not function in normal course. Tataha, I have already told you, I skip. So, four such methods. The Upanishads can manage to reveal Brahman by apparent or mithya attributes. Example, the revealing sky by blue color. It is having a mithya color. There is no color in the sky. The, the, the sky, the ether, Akasa does not have any color. It is colorless. So, the blue water of the ocean, water does not have color. Like, so, 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 so this, is the, this is the method. So, you know, Shankara says, Apratyakshepi Akase Balaha Talamalinatam Adhyashyanti. So, the blue color is associated with the people <coughs> to understand so to understand Akasa. Sun can be referred by rising and setting sun, but there is a, there is a no at no point of time sun sun neither rises nor sets. It is only earth moves. So understanding is different from perception. What we see does not take away our understanding by our understanding. Perception is not hampered. Perception is not done away with. Uh, we understand the sun does not rise, but we see sun rising. Our rising, so seeing the sun rising does not affect our, it does not get affected. Our knowledge that sun does not rise does, uh, never gets affected. So, Brahman is called Sakshi. We can take an incidental attribute to reveal an object. So, so this, is the, this is the first thing that I will be talking about. So, it is, the first, first point is, you, you superimpose something and then try to understand that. Take away that superimposition, that thing remains as it is. Like, sky cannot be seen. I say, what is seen through the blue color is sky. So, blue color is not there later on. That which sun moves, we see, make the child understand. Later on, we say, it is only the earth moves and it, the, the perception is illusory. That is why. So, this is Adhyasika. So, by superimposition, we can understand. So, second method is, this is referring a house amid similar houses. Accidentally, a crow sits on a house. Crow is not an intrinsic attribute of the house. 
बट अन एक्सीडेंटल वन इंसीडेंटल वन द्रुत उपाधि काकब देवदत्त गृह समबड़ी आज क्वेर इज माई वेर वेरी वेरी देवदत्त हाउस द समबड़ी आंसर देर इज देर वेर देर इज ए क्रो ऑन द टॉप ऑफ द हाउस दैट इज द हाउस ऑफ देवदत्त बट बाय द टाइम दिस फॉलो गोज क्रो इज नॉट देर देन दैट डज नॉट मीन दैट दैट इज नॉट हिज हाउस एट दैट पॉइंट व्हेन द पर्सन वाज टॉकिंग इट इज एन इंसिडेंटल अफेयर इट इज एन एक्सीडेंटल फीचर ऑफ द हाउस कॉन्शियसनेस कैन नॉट बी रिवील्ड बाय द बॉडी बॉडी इज नॉट कॉन्शियस इंट्रेंसिकली बट टेंपोरेरीली that is how the the second method is used so third method is the very absence of attribute can be used as a method like in several glasses there are something or other when i say that bring an empty glass the glass is attributed with a negative attribute that is called emptiness like spectacle free person absence becomes an attribute and there is mistake an attribute Call the bald man means everybody has hair, and the person who does not have hair is being like absence of hair is being the mark of that person. So absence of attribute, Abs- so emptiness is negative attribute, which is the key, which is the way like spectacle free person. Similarly, call the bald man is not a positive attri- attribute but a negative. The absence of attribute in nirguna brahman. So. The 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 Brahman is such a thing, such an object, vastu. It is. It does not have gunas at all. The fourth method, without talking about Brahman, you talk about something else and refer to Brahman indirectly. You talk without talking, referring to two people by attributing one person. Listen carefully. Suppose I say in the class there are two students. The junior is intelligent. Then it is understood that the senior. Senior is a fool. I would not talk about the senior is intelligent or not. I wanted to say that junior is senior is a fool, but I don't say that. I say junior is intelligent. So mauna silence is indirect speaking. If I say that I have to go to market, you won't ask me to come to a theater. So like suppose I ask you uh, where are you going, you I say that wherever you want, I will drop you. The question and answers are two different things. without talking you talk like you 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 communicate so yeah so so fourth method atman is neither known nor unknown both are objects and this is the method of lakshana vritti all the objects are negated the unnegated remains you know the problem comes in the brahma sutra bhashya if it is known why should we learn this if it is unknown how can we learn this you know shankara says it is known as well as unknown it is known everything like when you say i am misra i am referring to the brahman only therefore atman is neither known nor unknown uh, so uh, th- th- this problem has been there all around the upanishads they say if you say that you know you do not know yasya amatam tasya matam if you say that you know you do not know if you say i do not know you know and a person who knows does not know a person who does not know knows matam yasya navedasah abhijnatam vijanitam vijnatam abhijanatam so this is how the upanishad goes that does not mean that i can go and ask somebody at whether you know brahman he says no i and i will say that you are a brahman gyani no that is not agreed has to be understood properly so words can give the knowledge intimate knowledge leading to direct knowledge experience books on paris and are the words a bunch of words that paris has this many streets this many population all that if you go to um, wikipedia you can find this paroksha unless i intimately experience this words cannot give direct experience Vedanta does not want to give any such anubhava since avastatra has given you all the experience avastatra swapna jagrat and susupti has given us all the pro- all the experiences possible experiences and our problem is i experience and how do i experience i experience myself as limited parichinnatva and advaita parichinnai parichinna jiva 
but Advaita talks about the limitless I. My problem is to discern as to which one is the real, one should be Swabhavika and other is Agantuka. One, either, either of the two alternatives, I am naturally what and accidentally what. I am naturally Brahman. Therefore, it is known in some way, unknown in some other way and this unknown to known is the road for unspeakability to speakability and speakability to unspeakability. So, we have in the world, our problem is not experience, but only to question our conclusions that we have experiences all along. This conclusion is that I am the limitless one has to be understood. It is not that I am a human being looking for becoming a spiritual being Brahman. The Sankara all along says that I am a spiritual being and in the empiri, sorry, empirical ambience that the Hiryana, one professor from Mysore says, Jiva is Brahman with empirical dress, empirically dressed. Jiva is nothing but Brahman, but only the empirical dress makes the difference. And therefore, Vedanta helps us to make, helps to make us arrive at the proper knowledge in which state it will come, see the primacy of perception again. Primacy of perception, it will come at the state of Jagrat. Teaching, learning, understanding Vedanta does not come either in Supra or in Susupti. This cannot be understood in Susupti. Hence, only empirical world situation has to be experienced, explicated, understood. That's why Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, I told you, Tamas means not total absence of knowledge, like a light. It is it is some light. It is a darkness does not mean total absence of light, but some light from which you take me to the better light. So that is what, uh, hence Upanishads take you through them, reach and to reach beyond them. That is what Upanishads themselves says. This is the only tradition, friends, where the book has been taken to be not an essential feature. It is necessary but not essential. The book, in all other traditions in the world, the book is so important. You cannot do anything without that book. It is a, it is, it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a philosophy with the books to go beyond books. That, that's why Veda, and this is not what I am telling Veda themselves speak, Upanishad themselves says that Yatra Vedaha Abedaha Bhavanti. At one stage will come when you, you, you reach that unspeakable state of Brahman where words drop. As I told you, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya, the words also become Mithya. This sentence also becomes Mithya. What remains as Satya is the essence of the statement which is associated as well as not associated with the word. Your name is associated with you, also not associated with you. When you are there and your name is Ram, you can you don't have to tell Ram hundred times to remember yourself as yourself. No. You don't have to. You you are with without names. So that is what Yatra Vedaha Abhedaha Bhavanti I tell I always tell that this is the only tradition where book is not essential. It may be necessary in the beginning, but when you go beyond the books, you don't carry the book. What's therefore therefore Therefore, we have two, two types of liberated persons. One is Vithana, Vithita, another is Samadhista. Once you get the knowledge, you find there is nobody who is not liberated, you don't work at all. And when you know that there are many who are awaiting liberation, you work for them. Shankar was one like that. You know, the Aurobindo once said that God laughed at Shankara thrice. Once, when he did his mother's, uh, the, 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 the rituals for after his mother's death, when he wrote Vasyas and when he built the Mathas, if there is nothing, everything is Abhidya, what was the necessity for all these things? Shankar was one of those Vithitas. He comes out, he is beyond words, but makes the world to go through the words to come out of it for understanding understanding the self, getting the self-knowledge, such a thing is being reflected in, in, in uh, such a thing is also, he has been influenced and it is reflected in Buddha, 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 Buddhism, it talks about Bodhisattvas. So, so 
you know this is this is the tradition tradition of a methodology when you can come out of words by going through the words shankara says shastriye tu vyavahare yadyapi buddhi purvakari na viditva atmana paraloka sambandham adhikriyate tathapi na vedanta vidyam asanayaadyatitam अपेद ब्रह्म क्षेत्रादिभेद असंसारी आत्मतत्व अधिकार अपेक्षते अनुपयोगा अधिकार विरोधाच एंड हि ऑल्सो सेज अस्य अनर्थ हेतु हो प्रहाणाय वट इज अनर्थ दिस अन अंडरस्टांडिंग ऑफ द सेल्फ व्हिच हैज ब्रॉट अबाउट दोस त्रय दैट आई हैव टोल्ड यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दोस रहित साध्य प्रहाणाय इन ऑर्डर टू डू अवे विथ दिस अनर्थ आत्मेकत्व विद्या प्रतिपत्त इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड द आत्मा is not different from brahman sarve vedanta ha arabhyante all the vedantic literature starts the word start tatha chayam artha sarve sam vedantanam tatha vayam asyam sharirak vimansayam pratip pratipadaisya pradarsayishyamah we shall show this in our sharirak vimansa and that is the literature which shankara takes and the methodology that he has dealt with to come from speech to the state of unspeakable brahman namo brahma divya brahma vidya sampradaya kartrubhya bam sarasibhya namo gurubhya thank you if there is any question you can feel free to ask Uh, sir is, is this uh, told briefly in that nirvana shatakam yeah all the shatakams are everywhere this will come uh -huh. Allah, is, is, is the it... essence of shankara's teachings in nirvana shatakam also ah uh, i see okay sir thank you any doubt ama you have any doubts uh, well, i think it's been a uh, wonderful speech uh i just i just have a question uh, there is also symbolism right uh, we have lot of things wherein things are been depicted symbolically for example saffron uh, as an example we have saffron flag so uh, where does it goes actually you know uh, or maybe uh, the murti puja aspect of it uh, because everything is brahman and still we see it in a saguna and a nirguna so how does saguna and nirguna connect and saguna uh, basically you know yeah. how saguna uh, has that inherent nirguna and how to depict time and space basically yeah. uh, i don't know yeah, essentially saguna is nirguna but for the purpose of vyavahar we have to have a sorry i have put it up for the purpose of vyavahar we go through saguna to nirguna the words are operative in the world see this is the highest example symbol that we can give words are the symbol for saguna isn't it and what does it say it takes you to a state realm beyond words another question can be formed out of this that is if there is saguna god okay what is god god is the brahman associated with maya why did the god create the world that can that can also be asked Isn't it? What is the purpose of God in creating the world? I always like this is like why did rope snake perceive down the rope? This is same question. Why did God create the world? Why did rope snake? Oh, why did we perceive rope snake on the rope? Same thing. Like a little different if you understand little deeply. I would say. the answer is there are two two ways we can answer why did god create the world the answer is which world there is no world there is no creation and this is the main thesis of gaudapada who says there is no ajati there is no creation creation comes only because of the misperception who created a rope snake on the rope i created i created out of what my ignorance i did not see it properly same thing there 
out of my ignorance i have created the world which is not there therefore which world then can we say that we created god we created god yeah 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 we can we can god say. is not there like, we created no, no, god no 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 god is not there <laughs> that is wrong god is not there nahi but we created god we created but like you know as i told you what is god god is the creator now on how how like this question is you know this question is who created a rope snake ignorance created who is ignorance it is my ignorance are you getting my point same thing you can create god you can do everything but all these things comes in the world of ignorance if your world is understood then god is understood both form a part of the now the question will be what your question what vardhan ji is how do you extend the brahman to the world uh, god and the world is world different from brahman is rope snake different from the rope it is not different if rope is not there rope snake will not be there so the rope snake is essentially rope similarly the world is essentially brahman it only appears you see appears because of my problem or what like whatever it is maya there avidya here ignorance here but appearance is the problem appearance comes because of my involvement i see it the same thing may be seen in a same thing can be seen 100 ways isn't it as you say, we are however different you see a particular thing in a particular way i don't see so these are all the problem of mind and mind is a product of maya vidya ignorance so once a person goes beyond it god is and is not does not matter god does not matter within is and is not like that is a why but god has a place shankar says saguna upasana gives you chitta shuddhi the mind has to see unless somebody comes and it is maybe possible suppose a person has some heart problem and he sees a rope as a snake or some child, your grandson put say a plastic rope a snake in your bed and you go and see it and go to hospital next day money see it creates the problem the problem is not because of uh, the snake the problem is because of your perception so that is how the shankara says all these things are only products of ignorance and the world what's also operate in the world of ignorance but what it refers to implies is beyond words like suppose your name is gopal ji patwardhan tomorrow something happens it will be michael abraham suppose it is possible possible names are accidental features you will still remain what you are a name comes and goes and comes only from the world of nescience avidya comes out of ignorance it is added feature not essential feature so uh, if ignorance is me ignorance um, is if i am ignorant no uh, uh, if say i am ignorant regarding the rope snake or whatever what is my perception like then who created me or my ignorance <laughs> good question so who created me and my ignorance right ignorance is not created for example who created me like you are the jiva okay the jiva is created as i told you by the world as a part of the world by the ishwara like brahman associated with maya you are created jiva is created okay that is number one question the second question is very important who created my ignorance you know the simple answer is now are you coming for all these classes so when from you know me last one week when from you do not know me no 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 i am telling when from you do not know me know me seven days 
not knowing me how long you have been having my ignorance about misra how long no time are you getting my point it is something which does not have a creation but it has an end if i so the day you know me my ignorance your ignorance of me which has been there all along mainly million like uh, you cannot don't don't put a dot there that side comes to an end same thing here ignorance is something which is there which 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 is there means it is it is, it is not there like you don't have to have ignorance you can always perceive things properly that is how the, the whole tradition of vada also comes from the here okay so ignorance is not anadi and it is always there and um, the, it is there for the man to get out of to understand himself like same thing like sankhya school is it clear Thank yeah uh, one uh, my question is the extension of the previous question actually uh, if uh, my brahman gets moksha If, my brahman uh, get if i get if i get moksha is uh, does that mean i have left jiva and gone beyond ignorance yes. you have left the jiva to the state of being a jiva you have left you can what is jiva to that is a very important question i didn't have the time to discuss what is how do you associate this this is this two sutra what are these two sutras where from they come i didn't have time two things are responsible for these two sutras one is i and another is mine so a person who as i told you two types of liberated persons sankara buddha they are liberated they come and work for the people they don't have the they don't have the state of being themselves i or they don't possess anything mine body works as long as it can work that is the Is it clear? Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, my question is: In many areas in our life, we feel there is certainty and uncertainty. So, doesn't it uh, supporting our that uh, yes no wala concept? I could not. Suppose, know. Uh, suppose uh, there is prediction that it will rain or it will not oh, rain. Oh, that is what you are telling. Oh, ah, so that's why. So, so certainty it is, it is in like uncertainty is there. Oh no no no! I think we are missing about two things. Okay. Suppose you say that there is a prediction there will be rain and does not many times it does not rain in India, even everywhere. Yeah. Like you no, know, it does not happen. But you know this is a part of our like uh, the belief. You know prediction is somehow related to something certain or uncertain we cannot say. Mm. certainty about things or uncertainty you cannot say we believe that it can happen isn't it but vedanta does not talk in that type of a language it is certain knowledge no we discuss one thing the bottle is there and bottle is not there so it will rain and it will not rain like that uh, that's what so i'm can telling. we compare these two examples? no 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 it will rain you cannot say it may not rain okay but you know that type of a language they are not using they are using the language with certainty we don't have anything called belief we have the knowledge just because something is not seen i cannot say that it is not there mm. that is how the, they say that you know suppose i do not know something that does not mean that type of thing is not there thank you sir yes one last question <laughs> what i understood is that this world is the creation of ignorance and so people like ignorance me, yes like a, that is created by ignorance it is a very very primarily ignorance yes okay. yeah now people like shankaracharya or buddha who has who came out of ignorance how did they perceive this world how differently they perceived very good this world? that is what exactly i have been telling that once a person comes out of uh, that ignorance what remains in him that's what your question yes. is he becomes a person without two things one is he does not have the concept of i i am a professor my name is misra all these things 
are very like uh, they are not present in me i is not present i have i am and i have see what you have is not what you are okay you have a dog that is very different from what you are so all these halves and arms are dropped for such a person and a person therefore becomes uh, very like uh, justifiably uh, what uh, qualified to do altruistic services for the mankind to see that not only he that the, the you know that plato's cave man like he thinks that everybody must see the the, the ray of enlightenment Okay. I think I have confused you. Or <laughs> see, he is not having two things. He is not have ahung mamatto abhimana. What is the state of mukti? What is the state of being a liberated person? Ahung mama abhimana rahitiam. So he is a please give him. Anil. So ahung mama abhimana rahitiam. Then how did they interact with the with the remaining people who were ignorant? Just to tell them the way. to get liberated out of the world all these things teaching is only meaningful for such a person as i told you he becomes a person with two things he knows how to teach and he knows what to teach and that he can reach out to the people it is not like a mathematics teacher it is a teacher of the self knowledge i the words i used is srotriya and brahmanista any work of him see that does not mean suppose a person does not have food i will go to brahma gyani will go to his house and teach him okay come i will teach you brahma gyani no taking care of the people as per their requirement and making it culminated in brahma gyana that is what the that is what the brahma gyani does she is the she is the conspicuous pain of the other making the other resolved re- resolved his ignorance and dissolved into the concept of self as he has been but he also understands the pain that person is suffering it is out of ignorance yeah. but he cannot tell that no no why can't he tell that that but is that is what buddha you know if you read the buddhist jatakas many places this has been addressed in a very profound way by buddha he says what all problems you come it has been created by you if you address the problem properly the problem will not be there at all you know that story of handful of mustard everything it like this is the this is the way he addresses addresses by going to the level of the person his understanding and how he can be benefited out of his teachings therefore in our tradition sadhus are not uh, like uh, parasites we worship them because of this but now this the scenario is different there are large number of such people those who do many things and it need not be a sadhu in any form there can be teacher the teacher can be in any form he need not be um, these things like a particular form with a particular dress uh, thanks professor yeah thank you uh, and there is one announcement to be made Uh, under the infosys uh, foundation supported uh, academic development program here the next program shall be a course on vada shastra that is the uh, theory and practice of debate which will be held uh, on the coming saturday and sundays uh, from 9 to 2 uh, by professor radhavallabh tripathi and uh, um, all of you are certainly uh, requested to attend the same and for the formalities of the same uh, please contact uh, mrs chetana gosavi please uh, she is the coordinator of the infosys foundation academic development program and all of you are requested to kindly make it a point to attend this particular course um, i request uh, dr amrita nathu the assistant curator of the institute to propose a vote of thanks thank you so sir we were fortunate to listen to professor mishra even during the last week in the five day course on indian philosophy and today also he delivered an enchanting lecture uh, in his usual 
uh, lucid style with a slight touch of humor with simple and day-to-day -day examples. I extend our thankfulness to you, sir. Thank you very much. I also thank Professor Bahulkar, the Honorary Secretary of the Institute, under whose guidance uh, this uh, Infosys Foundation supported academic development program is progressing successfully. Thank you, sir. We are grateful to Dr. Vijay Bedekar and his team in Thane for live webinar of this event. Many have joined us. Thanks are due to media for uh, timely publicity. And lastly, I thank you all for attending the lecture and for a lively discussion. I hope to see you again. Thank you all.